Nathan Drake is a well-traveled man, beginning his adventures on the PlayStation 3 and quickly becoming a standout for Naughty Dog and the PlayStation Studios as a whole. Through to the current generation, he and the crew are now the latest to join the staggered PC releases thanks to the new Legacy of Thieves collection which gives us an enhanced version of the two titles updated on PlayStation 5 last year. The question is, have they stood the test of time? <laughs> With many of Sony Studios beavering away on titles, having a separate team port your existing games to PC has become a key asset and strategy of Sony's. This time their own internal studio in Nixies is busy on the recently released Spider-Man Remastered on PC ports, plus more later this year. And so the honours fall upon Iron Galaxy who have also made a name for themselves as a proficient porting studio from PC to console and back again. The task here was to take the roots of the older Naughty Dog engine used on the PS5 remasters and port them over to PC running under the DirectX 12 API. The task here would have been challenging due to the varied nature of the PC platform being the polar opposite to the bespoke nature of the engine designed for PlayStation. One big hurdle for developers in the PC space with DirectX 12 is that of shaders, and more specifically, shader compilation. You see, with consoles and even fixed hardware such as the Steam Deck, these chunky GPU code routines are required on a platform-by-platform -platform basis. Now, depending on your generation, make and model of GPU, you will require all or some bespoke shaders to be compiled. These may be as simple as drawing the UI for 3D objects when you click the stick, to rendering in an explosion with GPU particles and more. As such, the team have taken an async approach, just as we saw with Horizon Zero Dawn and Spider-Man. Essentially, they create these across one or more CPU threads as soon as you load into the game and during play. The aim here is to create all the required GPU shaders for every possible area of the title, store them in a local cache on your hard drive and call them as and when needed. Due to the cost this has though, you will need a fast CPU to enable the game to play without too much hitching as these are built, which you can easily check in the game menu. Once done, you should have a mostly smooth experience unless you update your GPU driver where all this will need to be done again. Now I did note a few stutters from time to time into the 100 millisecond range. Now these may be shader related, but they can also be just general data or other areas of context switching. I applaud the way the team have done this though, as it maximizes the hardware whilst enabling you to dive straight into the game or wait until they are built. All in all, resolving or significantly mitigating the specific PC issues. So praise where praise is due. Now let's cover the basics of the game itself, or at least both games, as they are based on the PS5 remasters from last year, meaning unlocked frame rates, 4K resolutions, faster input times loading, and multiple modes on consoles. All of this, which we covered back then on our performance review, which you can check out on the IGN channel. On PC, this means a selection of graphical options higher than 4K and modern reconstruction technologies to best suit your current specification in AMD's FSR 2.0 and Nvidia's DLSS 2.0, all fully supported and accompany the game's own TAA solution. In addition, you get an ultra-wide 32x9 or 21x9 aspect ratio for those that want that full Sam Peckinpah vistas to enjoy. The boosts over the PlayStation 5 version come from a small boost in shadows that does resolve one of the weaker aspects of the PS4 and PS5 version, offering a higher resolution map with a softer feathered edge to them. Certainly not a huge boost, but it can clean up some shadow aliasing in certain sections and can come at a medium impact to performance depending on your hardware. It can also boost a level of detail for foliage and geometry over PS4 and Pro, bringing it closer to the PS5 upgrade, but not always, although I do suspect that this is a bug. In many sections, a small boost to bushes, shrubs and other distant foliage can be noticed when enhanced is selected. This lines up exactly with the PS5, as does the small bump in medium to far geometric construction, i.e. some rocks or trees sport a higher polygon count. This is minor though, and although when pointed out here you can notice it, most of the time it would be invisible. The problem on PCs, this is not always present, as here with some sections showing a shorter LOD level on PCs best coming in lower than the PlayStation 5. Again, I suspect a bug as other scenes are a direct match. The issue here is that the cost to performance is dependent on the scene and if it's present. 
As such, it cannot be confirmed what the cost is on PlayStation 5, but likely small to the tune of 3 to 5% at most. The overall Ultra settings are lying very close to the PS5, aside from shadows which match the high, meaning Ultra can see a 2 to 5% performance impact over high depending on the shadow map requirements per scene. In addition, other emissions on PC, again likely bugs, is per object and camera radial blur, is not enabled even when you turn it on in the menu leaving the PC without any motion blur effect at all, but some may say that's a bonus. It must also be noted though, this may sport a couple of percentage impact of performance on the PS5 as well. Now this is easier noticed in action over the LOD change I've just mentioned, so hopefully the team gets a patch out soon to get this working, which I'm sure they're more than aware of and I have sent feedback to them already. Texture filtering lines up almost exactly to high, being again one rung down on Ultra, as you can see with the on-screen examples. It's very minor, but certainly a small shift. and ambient occlusion is closest to ultra with again high really not standing out as a huge difference if any at all. I cannot see anything meaningful in terms of visual quality and less than 1% difference in performance. The same is for reflections with low turning off SSR completely and offering the biggest boost of around 8% going from off to ultra. High looks almost exactly the same but again I noted no significant performance differences between the two. Just like AO once you get to medium they're pretty much the same from high to ultra. This is the Naughty Dog engine and therefore it does allow materials to have screen space reflections on or off depending on the area in question and a lot of them still use cube maps only even on the ultra settings on PC. This leaves textures which unsurprisingly match ultra which are the same as high really except you get higher MIPS often across the scene due to the higher VRAM of the PS5. Be aware that on an 8 gig card such as my 2070 here you can run over the limit but generally the textures, the ambient occlusion reflection and LOD quality match the PS5 when set to ultra with those shadows and filtering being one rung lower on PS5 with the noted disparity of the LOD and motion blur likely coming in a patch soon. I did note a few of the minor bugs though, such as the snow texture layer can draw out as you move in and out of the screen, pushing it under the floor layer, leaving a base texture that isn't supposed to be seen. And this can be exacerbated by resolution. So if you turn on DLSS, for example, the lower the resolution is, the more obvious this is, and it draws in or out further away from you as you walk in and out of the screen. So it's likely linked to the output resolution buffers. Again though, we're probably gonna see patches on this title at launch, or just after. One other area to discuss is the fact that this game is designed around the PS5's large pool of RAM, 16 gigabytes in its entirety, which means it will exceed eight gigabytes of VRAM quite quickly on a PC. So with my RTX 2070, it quite clearly tells you in the menu not to run ultra textures, and I advise that you also don't do that unless you're sub 4K, so 1440p you'll be okay because the buffers are much smaller. If you do, you'll effectively be page swapping with your system RAM and that will negatively affect performance. You can also then bleed out of your VRAM and you can impact performance sometimes by around 50%. Restarting the title will fix this, so just be aware not to break over that eight gigabyte limit because it will severely impact performance. So now with the settings out of the way and the comparisons, we can look at the performance on a couple of PC specs and how it compares against the PlayStation 5. And when it comes to performance, the PC can break free of that 120 FPS maximum of the PlayStation 5, again, all dependent on the hardware you have. And to ensure I do not overstate the console levels, even after my test shown in the video here, for performance, I have set everything to high, including that LOD setting, which gives the PC a potential performance gain of around 2 to 13% as tested, with the caveat that the motion blur and LOD differences on PS5 round out the shadow boost we're seeing if we run these at Ultra. 
Now of note is when I'm running Ultra, I'm only doing that on the RX 6800 specifically against comparisons to the PS5. Most of the time on the RTX 2070, I'll be running the exact same settings as PS5 as I can get, which is predominantly the high settings. With this noted, the PS5 has three modes. All of them tracked the exact same settings other than fixed resolutions. Fidelity is a native 3840 x 2160. Performance offers 2560 x 1440. And that performance plus, which targets 120 FPS, is a fixed 1080p. If you do have a VRR screen though, you can unlock both fidelity and performance to go to 60 or 120 FPS respectively as a maximum. And these are the modes I will be using to compare to the PC. Now taking my long serving RTX 2070 here with an overclock to two gigahertz, we start with the native 4K mode. From the start, we can see that the PC is some 37% behind the PlayStation 5 in these real time cinematics. These fluctuate over the section, meaning the PS5 can be between 9 to 15 FPS higher frame rate than the RTX 2070. Now, due to the low CPU demands and the high GPU ones, we are nowhere near CPU limits here, meaning that these high settings at 4K, we are 100% GPU bound on both. Covering a wide open drive and then the action pack section, the RTX 2070 comes in with an average FPS of 35.2 versus an average of 47.5 on the PlayStation 5, seeing a 34% average gain to the PS5. <laughs> With my AMD RX 6800, we can see that at the ultra settings, we can get close to a locked 60 FPS at 4K. It can dip below at some points into the 50s, but with FreeSync or such enabled, it would be all but invisible without this kind of frame rate test. It's not a surprise though that a GPU of twice the performance give or take of the RTX 2070 can see such a big leap in performance, meaning this GPU can outperform the PS5 by approximately 24% at 4K Ultra settings. Obviously the caveat for PCs is you can turn on FSR and DLSS to gain even more performance out of the GPU with that reconstruction technique. <laughs> Moving into the 1440p mode, which again matches that performance mode on PS5, we don't change any of the settings, but the resolution now drops by 55% over that 4K fidelity mode, meaning we edge closer to being CPU rather than GPU bound. Something that may be surprising, as this is the very first time we have seen the Naughty Dog engine outside of the console space, and the CPU threading is unsurprisingly excellent, as you would expect. It also likes frequency. The API and driver cost of PC is significantly higher than on PS4 and PS5, and we can see this with the CPU demands. Even with a 6-core 12-thread Zen 3 5600X at 4.7 GHz, we can become limited by the CPU, even at 1440p on the RX 6800. This is not always the case though, and dips can come at sector points or sometimes without any real discernible cause for them. We see this on the PS5's 120 FPS 1080p mode also, with certain areas dipping into the 90s when traveling through the world, which suggests that the engine may still rely on the CPU for some of its data streaming work. This translates to a far more powerful CPU being required and also bottlenecked at the same points on PC. 
Loading though is still very fast on PlayStation 5. Testing Uncharted 4 and The Lost Legacy on PS5 both load within 3 seconds, which is half the speed of the best of the PC versions with a minimum of 3.5GB per second SSD and a much faster CPU in that Zen 3 5600X. But even on PC the loading is incredibly fast, coming in somewhere between 5 to 7 seconds. As per Uncharted 4, the Lost Legacy in Fidelity mode on PS5 can hit 60fps in rare points, but this game is slightly more demanding than Uncharted 4 at points and we can see this mode dip into the high 30s in brief heavy action. As such, the RX 6800 is still approximately 25% faster than the PS5 in like for like sections, again here being tested at the same high settings, but the caveats noted earlier that the PS5 is approximately 30% faster than the RTX 2070. The boost for PC comes in FSR 2.0 or DLSS 2.0, which can help solve these GPU limits. Be aware though that in the quality mode in DLSS runs at 1440p, and that is more demanding on the GPU than just running the game at 1440p. But it does offer a small increase in fidelity, but still presents some ghosting artifacts on particle effects that are not present without it. As such, for this level of GPU, or just below above, I recommend Balanced, as it can close up that 30% gap, albeit at a lower resolution and image quality, but it's worth the impact to gain the performance. As the circa 13% impact at worst going from high to ultra, I would recommend that most set the game to high on all areas and then use the LSS or FSR to gain the best balance of either 60 or 120 FPS, so long as you have the CPU and GPU to hit that. The small visual gains made in Ultra aside shadows are practically invisible and this includes the extra foliage and geometry the PS5 version sports over the current PC build. But the engine scales exceptionally well across various hardware specifications which will include the Steam Deck but that obviously requires some bigger cuts to gain a smooth 30fps level. It is within those CPU demands that can become very high once you try to push north of 120fps. The Uncharted titles have been a diamond for the PlayStation platform and nothing has dulled that shine on PC. The port here is an accomplished one, although a little lacking in terms of the tweaking options we expect on PC, they still offer enough choice to personalise the game to your needs and hardware. The boost to frame rates, resolution and shadows can vary in how much they matter, but the choice is good, as is the ultra-wide display options being right there in the menu, full FSR and DLSS 2 support helping you gain more from your GPU, and even integration of that DualSense the PS5 brought in with haptic feedback. But they are predominantly the same as last year's PS5 release, with most not being able to pick out any differences even in side-by-sides, and in most regards, they're both not a huge leap over the 6- and 5-year-old titles respectively on the PS4 Pro versions. The CPU demands to get and exceed 120 FPS may be higher than you expect, and even with a very high level CPU and GPU, a locked 120 FPS even at 1080p was not always possible, at least with the current build. That said, you can run the game at 160 plus FPS and even at 8K if you sport the required hardware. Some bugs do remain that are minor, but hopefully Iron Galaxy has patches due soon that will resolve the ones I've noted here and to the team during my review. Both games are still flamboyant, action-packed graphical showcases for your hardware, and even on top-end PC, they shine and impress as you swing in for the takedown or just get your bell rung one more time. And that's it for another deep dive comparison in all things PC, console and video game related. And if you do like what we do here on IGN Performance Reviews, then keep it IGN and we'll catch you very soon on the next one.